Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic Sea Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is sponsored by coronatools.com, the nation's leader in garden and landscaping tools. Listeners of The Organic View can receive 20% off their coronatools.com purchase by using the coupon code ORGVIEW. That's O-R-G-V-I-E-W. For more promotional offers, please visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. And don't forget to check out our contest section. On today's show, Tom and I have several interesting topics that we'd like to discuss. In the news, the decline of the mayfly is causing quite a stir. We're also going to talk about new research from the University of Illinois regarding honeybees and glyphosate. And Syngenta is back in the news. They're petitioning EPA for expanded use of thiamatoxin. So I'd like to welcome to the show my co-host, Colorado beekeeper, Mr. Tom Theobald. Hello, Tom. Hello, June. We uh, had got six eggs today. That may sound like a strange response, except to the listeners who have a home flock of chickens. We hit a low point right around Christmas time, the winter solstice, when the chickens virtually quit laying eggs. And so now we're back in business, and that's one of the first signs that spring is on the way. Well, I'll consider that to be a feather in your cap. <laughs> well, cluck, cluck. Exactly. Aside from that, the first topic that I'd like to talk about is this concern about the mayfly decline. And once again, mayflies as so many other species, they're indicator species, and what happens to them inevitably will happen to us. So this is coming out of The Guardian. We've seen so many species, Tom. We've seen fireflies. We've seen the decline of ladybugs, frogs. Graham White is always talking about how there are no more frogs on Long Island. And we, there's so many other species with the butterflies, just so many different animals are being affected. Well, Jeff Anderson and I came up with the concept of the windshield test several years ago because you can drive in the country in the, on a summer day anymore and you get hardly any insects at all on your windshield. And that's an indication of what, what the consequence of these pesticides has been. Uh, you know, that's corroborated by the study that came out a few months ago from Germany where they had been weighing the biomass of flying insects for 27 years, I think it was, in German nature areas, natural areas. And what they had found was that over that 27-year period, there had been something like a 76% decline in the insect, in the flying insect biomass. We have uh, evidence coming from every direction, and the people that we rely upon to to understand and and take action are failing us terribly. And we'll talk a little bit more before we're done, I think, because there are some other subjects that touch upon this. Well, the Guardian reported that the salmon and trout conservation has been conducting an in-depth three-year survey of rivers and they took a quote from the CEO of that organization and his name is Paul Knight and he said the results of this groundbreaking new study are irrefutable we believe this is just the tip of the iceberg lose your invertebrates and other species will follow and we've been saying this for so many years haven't we Tom well, this, this uh, study is on the heels of one that came out about two weeks ago that sh showed that they had found neonicotinoids at toxic levels in almost all of their river systems in the UK. So it's, it's n no surprise that the mayfly is declining. Um, 
it's very interesting. There's an American parallel to this. For several years, I went up to Montana each June, and I ran a drift boat for a, a friend who was a fishing outfitter. And I ran the drift boat while he fished, and we went from one Montana Trout River to another, and we did it during the salmon fly hatch. And the salmon fly is like the mayfly. There's a short period in June where they emerge from the the river and they fl- climb up on a weed and they molt and then they fly over the the river mate drop their eggs into the water which starts the cycle over again so i'm going to investigate and see if there's been a a similar decline in the salmon flies because anyone who's listening who's a fly fisherman knows that the salmon fly Hatch is renowned worldwide. Well, this also reminds me of several interviews we did a few years ago in regards to benthic invertebrates. There was a whole big controversy over the use of neonicotinoids when it came to, I do believe it was oysters, because it was such a a tight-knit circle of farmers that were farming these animals. And just the thought of using a neonicotinoid in water, which it's it's mobile in water to begin with, is just frightening. Not to mention the fact that the there's the impact on other species that live in that water. It's just horrible. Well, that, that was an issue uh, two or three years ago, and uh, the state of Washington declined to let them do that, and it has come back, and it's before the state of Washington... Again, right now, and and the dangers are just as you described, June. I mean, here's something that's water soluble, that can have a half life of years, for which in the lower level life forms there's no safe dose, and they're going to put it in the tide flats. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah, I, there's no other way to describe it. It is crazy, and that's pending right now, and we'll probably see that decision within the next couple of weeks. We'll report on it when it comes, but that uh, that's before the state of Washington right now. What about in the state of Maryland? They have a similar situation, I do believe, and this is in regards to crabs. Uh, I'm not sure I know. I don't, I don't know if I've seen anything on that or not. I don't recall anything. Well, we'll have to check back with the folks in the state of Maryland to see what the latest developments are. Thank you, Tom. The next topic is in regards to new research from the University of Illinois, and it's in regards to honeybees. And basically what they're reporting is that honeybees attracted are attracted to glyphosate and a common fungicide. Yeah, this is terrible news because these are two chemicals that are used very, very widely. I mean, they're used all over the country. And lastly, Syngenta is back in the news. Syngenta is petitioning US EPA for expanded uses of thiamatoxin. Tom, can you share with our listeners some of the uses for thiamatoxin and what this actually is going to mean for the beekeepers? Well, um, this is an interesting uh, issue because the EPA has opened the comment period, but apparently thiamethoxam has been used at least for a year. This was a, a subject of discussion on another group that I'm a part of, and Jeff Anderson, a commercial beekeeper from uh, Minnesota, chimed in and said it's a little late for comments. He said they used it last summer in Minnesota with devastating effects, and he said my worst hit bee yard, I lost 35 out of 40 colonies outright, and the other five are probably dead by now. So I'm not sure what this petition really represents. Maybe they just want to expand the use. According to their petition, they want to use it on 165 million acres. So this is a this is a substantial expansion, and this is on top of perhaps 
240 million acres that are exposed to the neonicotinoids by way of seed treatment. Um, and their petition is filled with all the industry propaganda. I have it right in front of me, and here's one of their statements. They say, the weight of scientific evidence clearly shows that bees and other pollinators can safely coexist with neonicotinoids when product labels are followed. That's just absolutely untrue, and this, the weight of scientific evidence is to exactly the opposite. So this is the petition that's before the EPA, and I find it interesting. Not too long ago, three or four years ago, there was a petition submitted to the EPA with over a million signatures calling for the removal of the neonicotinoids from the market because of the damages they were causing, and the EPA simply ignored it. Do you think they're going to ignore this petition from Syngenta? I doubt Stay it. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. You'll, that, this is going to be rushed right through. Uh, it's, it's a sad situation. You know, we should have an agency that scrutinizes the science and comes to informed decisions. Instead, we have a regulatory agency that runs interference for the chemical companies. Well, that's I'm, what they've been doing all along, Tom. Well, I'm one of the plaintiffs in a lawsuit filed almost five years ago against the EPA, and over the course of that five years, we have seen almost every challenge that we raised dismissed. At, but the court finally did decide, concluded, uh, found, that the EPA and these are the exact words that they use, had systematically violated federal law in the registration of 59 different neonicotinoid products. Systematically violated federal law over a period of several years. This is about as close as the court can come to accusing the EPA of an ongoing pattern of criminal conduct. Well, what's been the reaction of the EPA to that lawsuit? Their reaction has been to spend millions of taxpayer dollars trying to support their violation of the law. This system is completely out of control and needs to be dismantled and rebuilt. It's, it's totally corrupted. Well... That's something that's been said numerous times, but look at what we have. Look at all the presidential memorandums that were issued during the last administration. Nothing happened with that. I don't think any administration is going to do anything. I think until things get severely worse, then action will be taken. That's like with anything. Well, they're already worse, and we're seeing not only the damage to the bees, which obviously is... is critical to a beekeeper, but we're seeing the loss of hundreds, if not thousands, of other life forms at the lower end of the food chain, and we are we have people talking about the sixth extinction. Um, this is a horrible situation, and we have a regulatory agency that's doing the best it can to do nothing. Well, we'll see what develops. Tom, thank you so much for joining me today. I know that this week's news is nothing fantastic. It never is. But at least we keep having that discussion. And at least we keep talking about the things that most people are really unaware of. Well, I think people have to be more aware. And it, it's uh, at times very frustrating and discouraging. But we have to keep talking about it. And we'll do the best we can. But this is, I think... Uh, a huge, huge problem that we're faced with, and we're getting no support from the people who should be paying attention. Unfortunately, that's true. But we got six eggs today. <laughs> that's true. Folks, if you have any questions for me or for Tom, please write to us at questions at theorganicview.com. Thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Tune in next week as Tom and I continue the discussion about neonicotinoids on the Neonicotinoid View. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>